We then um, we're going to investigate how heat affects the speed of a chemical reaction. So last week we saw that a catalyst, an enzyme, can speed up a reaction. How does temperature affect the speed? And the reaction we're looking at is the reaction of magnesium metal. Magnesium metal looks like that with hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid contains hydrogen and chlorine. Hydrochloric acid is just dissolved in water. This is the acid found in your stomach. We were going to do this experiment two times, one at normal temperature and one um, we were going to be cooling down the acid, so closer to zero degrees. So if we pop some magnesium in our test tube and we add some hydrochloric acid, obviously in our experiment we're going to be a little bit more accurate than that. If you can see that, you can see now that we are getting bubbles in this reaction. And if you look at the chemical equation, the chemical equation tells us the reactants, what we start out with, magnesium and acid, and the arrow then points to the products. The products, the gas that we're seeing, the bubbles, is hydrogen gas, and we, the magnesium is now combining with the two chlorines, and this product, magnesium chloride, is dissolving in the water. So in this experiment, we're going to be timing how long it takes for the magnesium solid to completely disappear and the, for the bubbles to stop and we're going to be measuring um, is it a faster reaction in room temperature or a faster reaction in ice. What we found out was it was a faster reaction um, the hotter it is. So in this case it would be room temperature and let me explain why. Okay, for this reaction to occur the magnesium has to collide with the acid molecules. Now, um, as you heat up a solution, the molecules in the solution are actually moving faster, so there's a greater chance of a collision. Now, when they collide, what has to happen is that these, the hydrogen and chlorine are connected. This bond, this chemical bond, has to break. And the higher the temperature, the more likely that we have enough energy to break this chemical bond. So if you see those chemical bonds are going to break, the chlorines are now going to reattach to the magnesium and the hydrogens from the acid are going to combine to form hydrogen gas. So it takes energy to um, break those bonds. So the higher the temperature, the faster the reaction. Formation of the new bonds actually produces energy. So if you felt the test tube, it would feel quite warm. This is an example of an exothermic reaction. Now, as you can see here, pretty much all the magnesium, there's a tiny bit left at the top, but all the magnesium has disappeared. And that's because, it actually hasn't disappeared, but that's because the product, magnesium chloride, is now dissolved in water. Now, getting back to the surface area, if this represented a piece of magnesium metal, we just saw that reaction, um, the acid could only attack the outside of the metal. It would take quite a while for the acid to eat away um, the metal until it could get to the middle. If we increase the surface area, for example, by cutting this clay, which is quite hard, okay, just cutting it once, now we've got more surface exposed to the um, acid. And if we carried on cutting it, I made it into very small pieces, then the reaction would be a lot faster because the acid can be attacking um, all the area all at once rather than starting on the outside and having to work its way in. So this is why um, our reaction with the lycopodium powder, the flame happened because we were blowing the powder and we were exposing um, a lot of the surface here. Do it again! Oh, that's a good one. Awesome! Do it again, do it again. Okay, you can stop. Okay, the reaction that you just saw was using a special powder called lycopodium powder. Um, the lycopodium powder in a big clump will not burn. Similarly, this you can do the same thing with general flour or cornstarch, and a pile of powder, a flour or cornstarch will not catch fire. Um, the reason that it catches fire when you sort of 
turn it into a powder is because you're exposing more of the surface to oxygen. So for example, if this represented our flour or cornstarch or like a podium powder, um, only the outside is exposed to the oxygen that's needed to burn it. But when we when we um, send it, when we pow when we sort of turn it into a dust dust that is in the air. So for example, like this, and it's in the air. More of the surface is now exposed to the oxygen, um, and it can catch fire. So in flour factories, when they're grinding up the grain to make flour or cornstarch, um, it can be very dangerous because you can have big fires. Okay, this is a video showing um, flour being on a piece of paper, being blown into a candle and catching. And this is a video showing cornstarch being blown and uh, turned into a sort of dust in the air and being blown above a candle. So the cornstarch is catching fire when it's a dust and the flour is catching fire when it's a dust because more surface area is exposed. Okay, we're now looking at the bun of our cheeseburger and how we make bread. And one of the um, key ingredients to making bread is yeast. We add yeast to flour to salt. And yeast is actually a living thing. A you know, single-celled creature that likes to eat carbohydrates. It likes sugar and it, it likes starch. Think of yeast like this, doing this to sugar and starch molecules. What the yeast does is it consumes starch in the bread and produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, a gas. Yes, the yeast expel gas after eating, like burping. We're gonna put so, the yeast is a one. The yeast is a one-cell creature. It eats the uh, flour or sugar that um, is that we can put into making bread, and it, it expels carbon dioxide. And the experiment that we're doing today is we're seeing how much gas is being produced by the yeast. So the students have added yeast, water, and sugar. And if you can see in this mixture how gassy it's getting, they put a balloon on the top. You can see that the carbon dioxide is being produced. Um, and then they're going to change one thing. They can change the amount of yeast, the amount of sugar, or the temperature. To, to get more gas. So the absolute basic ingredients that we need to make bread are flour, water, salt, and yeast. And flour is a starch, it's a carbohydrate. Gluten, when, you, um, you, when you're when you making bread, you have to sort of pummel it and knead it. And gluten is a protein that becomes very elastic and it sort of holds the carbon dioxide, um, and keeps the, the bread, it holds the carbon dioxide bubbles in so that the bread um, keeps its shape. So the yeast likes to eat uh, sugar, carbohydrates. It's a one-celled creature, and it burps out. So when it eats the sugar and carbohydrate, it burps out carbon dioxide. And after it's been in the oven for a while, the poor old yeast dies, and the bubbles in the bread come from the carbon dioxide that the yeast makes. Students are also um, using yeast to make wine, and, and making alcohol is one of the oldest chemical reactions that we know. And yeast, when we said that yeast um, eats sugar, it burps out carbon dioxide, it also burps out alcohol. So we're having a very simple reaction here. Students are using grape juice, and this is used to make wine, and the sugar, the grape juice is very sweet, so there's lots of sugar for the yeast to eat in the grape juice. And we're adding a little bit of yeast to it, so you can see this is our um, grape juice with yeast. We've already got some bubbles going on. And after our Italy trip, we will smell the um, grape juice, and hopefully it's been turned to alcohol. So that's making alcohol. So this is the chemical reaction to form alcohol. So we have a simple sugar here, glucose, and put some yeast in that. The yeast uh, is a chemical reaction, turns the sugar to alcohol, which um, is C2H5OH plus carbon dioxide. So there's our chemical reaction, sugar eaten by the yeast, alcohol and carbon dioxide are spat out. So we get a bit of alcohol when we make bread, but when we cook the bread, most of the alcohol will be evaporated off.